So I enjoy the commercial films more. Simply because they give me the opportunity to be able to make an independent creative choice. Because I do a fukre and it makes the money, I can do a masan, you know. Gives me the money to have that creative liberty and not be bound to choose a film just for money. Because films no one makes for money. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rahul. No, no, films you don't yeah. do for money. You do other things. You do events, yeah. you do all, all sorts of other things for money. And the other thing is that a, a commercial film gives you tremendous access to people. You know, if I had to even do TV, do something non-fiction on TV, which will put me in people's households every night. That access is irreplaceable. And then they come to the box office and watch your films because otherwise people don't know you. There's a million stars and a million star kids being harvested and launched every day. In the middle of all that, there's a lot of chaos. And for your question about cinema, <clears throat> I feel like both will survive. When we say there's Judwa and there's, you know, Bagi, this is also entertainment, it's escapist entertainment for the vast majority of this country that are looking for that escapist entertainment that are not interested in your multiplex cinema, that are just in, interested in watching something that entertains them for two, three hours and goes. Something safe, something enjoyable, something that doesn't force them to think too much. Everybody is so ex accessible and everybody is a star in the, like a YouTube star is a star. You and I may not know, but somebody who's on YouTube, their Instagram stars, their YouTube stars, there's, there's like wine and musically stars. They could be flash in the pans, but there will be then... 30 flashes in a pan in a day, right? So then, how do you compete with that? The, I think the, the best strategy is to do good films, to balance your work with so-called commercial, so-called... And you know, in the audience's mind, this distinction is gone because you may think that Fukre is a commercial film, but the industry doesn't think that Fukre is a very commercial film. They think it's a goofy, silly film, but if it truly had to be commercial, they would have replaced us with um, a star kid. I mean, we make such silly, stupid, nonsense films and we have these huge stars in it. And in fact, we make the same film again and again with the same star. And I think that the big star, the two, three, four big stars, except Amir Khan, I must say that. Amir Khan is a legend. He's, he's something else. But what I'm saying, other than... And this is not just on the star's side. It's, it is the responsibility of other filmmakers. Why can't we make great films with big stars? Why, why can't? Hollywood does it all the time. And, but we keep making these stupid, silly, nonsense uh, films with them. And even they, uh, I mean, those fact, films do... even Hollywood does make a lot of films. They also make stupid, silly, nonsense, but they make good films also. Like Hollywood makes a uh, great film, Titanic or something with fairly newcomers. But they can do that. You see, Bahubali did so well because a film was good. Nobody in India knew that actor, mm -hmm. the star. No one knew him in India. I mean, he was a star there, but in Hindi circuit, no one knew, right? But it was a great film. It worked. So why are we shying away with making films with great actors? What happens here is the difference between Hollywood and here, essentially, is that Hollywood doesn't give Oscars to Avengers and Transformers. But yeah. we do give our best film awards to films that have done well Commercial. at the box office. Now there is a popular film category even in the national national awards. So that is something worth thinking of because we are rewarding uh, box office. We are rewarding mediocrity yeah. And box office success, we are not rewarding cinema. As if they have not been That's rewarded. That's the difference. <laughs> exactly. And, and the thing is, in Hollywood, if somebody does like a, like, a, like a Jennifer Lawrence is a classic, play, she'll do a Silver Linings Playbook and a Joy and a Mother. Mm -hmm. And then she'll go and, uh, yeah. uh, you know, be uh, Red Sparrow, which yeah. is a strange film yeah. at best. But it has all the titillating qualities that are needed to make a mass entertainer. But then... Red Sparrow doesn't get an Oscar or a nomination. Yeah. That's the difference. Because when you reward, when you don't reward quality, people think that this is so worthless. Na, paisa bhi nahi kamati, naam bhi nahi. Something has to give you prestige at least. That doesn't happen. That's the flaw we have. So she starts off being fairly conventional. Uh, in that sense, it's true to the novel. But after that, that's just the starting point. After that, she... Uh, the point of conflict when it arises and you know there's also a play on class in the original that he reminds her of her hesiet or 
you know, in other adaptations is usually the mother or somebody, you know, who's telling you that you're not worthy of this family. So th when he mistakenly says something like that in drunken stupor or something, she takes it to heart and she decides that if it's all about power and status, I'm going to marry higher than you and then teach you a lesson by joining politics and defeating you in the political battlefield. That is an ego-driven action that she takes. But it makes for a very interesting character. Somebody who's not going to take shit lying down. That's something I identified with, definitely. And I enjoyed portraying as well. So is the film uh, more about the individual, as in the ego part and the journey? Or is it majorly a political intervention? Uh, no, the, the it is a love story at the heart of it. But... Because it's a Sudhir Mishra film and it's a rarity to find directors like this who introduce depth and subtext into the story. Because now I, I find it some somewhat very synthetic and superficial. You see two characters, they look at each other. Some dialogue happens then there's some poetry. They've fallen in love. They land up in bed and just to be progressive, they're like, oh, we slept with each other already. Ha ha, premarital sex is not a biggie. But in doing that, you make it a big deal, you know. So in this case, I find that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of depth, there's no other word for it, there's a lot of complexity in the interpersonal relationship.